Hello and welcome to 52 Weeks. This week we're going to be continuing through Chapter 4 in the Parks, Civic, and Open Spaces. And specifically, we're going to be looking at the next six weeks on the uh, types of parks and public space that are discussed in Chapter 4. We're still going through the, each of the individual segments, and this week we're looking at Segment 5, Plazas and Squares. The focus of plazas and squares is really important because of the social interaction that we have. These, this dates back to the age of cities and where people uh, were hanging out and doing commerce, where they were just uh, getting catching up on news, interacting with one another. The public realm is important. It's not just streets, but it's more of the pause of where things happen. And typically it happens in intersections, uh, but sometimes it also happens uh, off sides of main thoroughfares. So this is important because of the equitable social interactions that's necessary. This is probably best exhibited in any of the farmers markets that happen around the area, in particular the Broad Street Market, where we have a diverse social group that's around uh, people mingling and enjoying the space uh, that's there and uh, also enjoying the food that's there. And there's a lot of variety of activities that can happen. You can either sit, people watch, uh, partake of coffee, go get uh, some food, try out some samples, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And this interaction is really what's uh, important in knitting together the, the actual neighborhoods. So right at the beginning of this portion of this chapter looks at Second Street. It says, for example, Second Street Restaurant Row struggles with a lack of space on busy, pleasant evenings. So we understand that everything's crowded. We have to deal with uh, parked cars. The uh, tables are on the sidewalks. The sidewalks are, not, uh, even though they're wide, they're not quite wide enough. And trying to have people move through space is difficult. It, and it makes it a very difficult space to enjoy. Uh, and on top of that is you have a one-way street that's going up through as a main drag uh, through the north part of the city. In contrast to this, if you look at Second Street and then go back down to the Market Square, uh, that's pretty much a dead space on the weekends or evenings, mainly because of its use. It goes back to Land Use Chapter 2, what's on the four corners. The, in contrast, the four corners of the Market Square have become territorialized by in large institutional uses. So when you have institutional uses, they're not 24-7, and uh, when the day is done, work is done, uh, they become vacant. This is something that's been around even when I was at going to hack. This has always been there. Um, and also what doesn't help are the the uses that are there, even for valet parking from Hilton on the corner there. It's a really strange setup um, to not have that corner uh, really worked out in all these years. Uh, what also doesn't help is the transit. Well, the transfer station is right there. That's important. But the problem is it takes up a good portion of that space. And it's very difficult to navigate around there as a pedestrian. So this, you really can't rest or at, be at ease in there, especially when you've got three lanes of traffic, you've got parked cars on either side, and it's it's difficult to just exist. It's diff much different than other cities if you've gone to public spaces where uh, there's pretty much a traffic free or traffic is on the edges, and you can actually sit, relax, and enjoy and take in. This should be something very important as a crossroads of our city coming across the river on, into Market Street and then the intersection of 2nd Street going north. Even if the spatial issues of the territorialization were addressed, the square lacks enough restaurants and cafes to activate the space. So going back to what is the uses and how do you address the, the size and scale of the place. So goal 4.15, public squares as social hubs. While the city has an extraordinary system of green spaces, it has few identifiable civic spaces such as squares or plazas for public gathering, celebrating, and socializing. So this is where this is a, a map that's looking at ideas for uh, the proposed Uptown Plaza, proposed Curtain Park, proposed Riley Square, proposed City Square, and proposed Meander Park. These are areas that uh, look at uh, developing these social hubs. In this segment, there are three new social hubs that they'll be focusing on. I added a fourth, uh, which is in here, is uh, actually an existing space. So they're looking at new, with three new ones are City Square, which is at Market Street and Paxton Creek Greenway. The Meander Park is 18th Street, and Riley Square is connecting Midtown and Old Uptown. 
So those are new. The existing one that does need to be addressed is Market Square. And currently, I know the Harrisburg Young Professionals have been going through that process, um, started in 2016, to try to look at what to do with Market Square. It's a no-brainer. One of it is trying to deal with the institutional zones that are in there and the uses of the of the space, and then figuring out uh, some of the spatial consideration of, of changing the character or uh, actually addressing the, the street going through. So that's one thing uh, that the chapter will be looking at is some recommendations recommendations for how to address that square. So the first new one is the proposed city square. This is at 10th and Market Streets. It says in the comp plan, for years, Harrisburg has wrestled with appropriate use of its floodplain areas. Employing this space as a public plaza is a perfect use for flood-prone areas, providing a surface difficult to damage, easy to clean, and return quickly to use after flooding. So it makes sense to, to understand this. This is a space that's just east of the Harrisburg Transportation Center and up along Cameron and connecting to the Paxton Creek. And also continuing on this thought is that the design and programming should mandate the current impervious paving give way to permeable surfaces, including plentiful green bioswales, helping to infiltrate stormwater and reduce flooding. Now, this is a great diagram that shows the importance of Market Street. And number nine on there is the city square. So the goal is to think about how to make more pervious surfaces as dealing with floodwaters that come in. This ties back into the ideas like what are we actually building on here and how do we build? Things should be built in a way that can be cleaned up quickly and actually suffer less damage. And this means something that's on plinth or parking less uh, prone to damage, relating back to the Paxton Creek Greenway. The next one is Meander Square. This is objective 4.15.2, and this is repurposed the rail spur at Market Street and I-83. Again, reading out of the comp plan, this corridor of open space along the area's swale provides a multi-use opportunity for an open space connecting the former industrial buildings. So going the entire way from 83 up into uh, Market Street and beyond, understanding visioning this with the Allison Hill community, this is probably the single most important thing to be considered. This can be a linear connector that ties in the neighborhoods between east and west uh, of that area and becomes a, a play area that is much different than some of the play areas around our other parks and recreational areas. This also allows for some things that are more art related and innovation related. That's just something that people come here for, especially with the ethnic diversity that is here, the foods that are around here uh, all through Allison Hill. And uh, looking at it, that this now becomes a main destination. And the, the trick of this is the caveat to put out here is that we don't want to make this the, the next uh, gentrified area, that this becomes the uh, pushing and deplace, displacing everybody out of here. So this has to be done really well with the neighborhood organizations working together to allow that to happen. Uh, the neighborhood organizations have to work together to try to pull this together so that everybody has a seat at the table and it's really discussed of like long-term strategic plans of uh, what they want to see in their neighborhood. This should be tied into directly into medical, health, uh, all kinds of affordable housing and right-size housing. All the things that we're missing in Harrisburg should be here. All the things that we're saying that we need uh, as far as affordable housing types and uh, recreation for our kids, you know, those are the skate parks, these are the more ball courts, uh, any handball, any uh, basketball, uh, any water type of uh, recreation should be here. This is the place that that could be and it makes the most sense because a lot of it is residential that's along here. We've got formal industrial buildings, so we've got some big spaces that could be inhabited and this would be a, a great place for that to happen. What is also something to be remembering is that it, since it's a former industrial sites, there's a lot of hazardous materials that need to be considered. So there's things that need to be taken into consideration as far as land remediation uh, in that process. Talking about Meander Square, again, repurpose this rail spur. Understand that the area occupies the key location for forming a cohesive core for the entire Allison Hill area. It's critical to program the area to serve the neighborhood as a whole. So again, neighborhood organizations, you want to focus on something, you go ahead and, and identify this right now. We've got to help change that mindset. It's not about extracting the wealth out of the neighborhood. It is actually reinvesting back into it. We need people to invest who have long-term focus, long-term strategic plans. Uh, as residents, we should not be uh, looking at people to come in and just sit on land for 10 or 15 or 20, 30 years, as has done been done in other parts of the city. These areas around Midtown, these areas 
centers around Uptown. This has happened. We know this. We need concerned citizens to be watchdogs on these things and actually put pressure on these long-term developers who do not have any long-term interest uh, with the community. Uh, what's happened over the years is this long-term disinvestment because of that very land speculation has caused very deep fissures within our community, within our residents, and has affected our long-term health because of trauma to the neighborhoods as well as our educational facilities. So everybody who's trying to look at Harrisburg as the next big thing, please pause, please put this on pause and rethink and reconsider work with the neighborhoods, talk to the neighbors, get out and talk to the neighbors, find out who's not at the table, and make the effort. Do not assume, do not go in and look at this as undercover, we're going to just go and get this and get mine. If we have that mindset, that is going to be modeled again to the next generation. If we do not change that, uh, and have a continual cycle into the next decade. This is the biggest, most important thing that we can look at when we talk about triple bottom line. This is it. We got to think about people. We got to think about the place and let the economics take the back seat. If any time in conversations you start to see everything more about economic development, it should be a red flag. Uh oh, what's really at stake? Who is losing as far as the people and what is happening to our place? So Meander Square is one of those places that could be a core for Allison Hill. It's probably a 15 to 25 year uh, strategic plan that's right in there to really uh, put all that together. Meander Square is also looking at this area is considered to be a food desert. It lacks adequate open space and play space, particularly for youth. So again, this is another place, you know, when we look at what types of uses that are around here, that makes a lot of sense for play.